Good morning, friends, and welcome to another week of Bible Stories on here. I'm so excited that you guys decided to join me this week, and I hope you all had an awesome Thanksgiving with your family, and I hope you had an awesome week. So this whole month goes perfectly for this past holiday that we just celebrated, Thanksgiving. We have been learning about what word. It starts with a G. Hmm. Gratitude, yes. And what is gratitude? Gratitude is letting others know you see how they've helped you. So today's Bible story is coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 26, and Exodus chapter 12. Now I'm not going to read all of the words word for word from the Bible. I'm going to put them in my own words um, to help you understand the story that I'm, I'm talking about. But I do encourage you guys to go back through the Bible this week with your family, your friends, your grandparents, uh, your parents, and to read the stories, the story that I'm going to tell you. When we worship, we celebrate God. In fact, every time that we gather at church, we celebrate him together and we take time to thank him for all that he's done in our lives. We also have some holidays throughout the year that help us remember what God has done. What are those holidays? Do you know? Go ahead and chat them out. Yes. At Christmas, we celebrate how Jesus was born to be our Savior. And at Easter, we celebrate how Jesus died on the cross and for our sins and then rose from the dead. There's another really special, special celebration that happens in churches all over the world. Do you know what it's called? Go ahead and shout it out if you do. If you said communion, you are correct. Maybe you've heard of communion before, or maybe it's new for you. Communion is an amazing way for people who have put their faith in Jesus to celebrate and remember what he's done for us. So what's it all about? Let's start by looking back at the night before Jesus died on the cross. That night, Jesus ate a special dinner with his closest friends, the Passover meal. There were even more foods um, than you could imagine. There was a lot of food there. And the Jewish people had been celebrating Passover for a long, long time, ever since God had freed them from the slavery in Egypt. As the people ate the Passover meal, they took time to remember the way that God had rescued his people. They remembered um, how God had sent Moses to speak to Pharaoh, the ruler of Egypt. And Moses told Pharaoh to set God's people free. But Pharaoh wouldn't listen. God had sent some terrible warnings called plagues to Egypt. But each time, Pharaoh refused to let God's people go. The tenth plague was the most terrible of all. The oldest son in Egypt would die. But God made a way to save the sons of the Israelites. Each family was to kill a lamb and to put the blood on the top and the sides of their doorframe. That way, the plague would pass over them. Yes. That's why we called the celebration Passover. That night, Pharaoh finally ordered his Israel, the Israelites to leave. They packed up quickly and they didn't have time for their bread to rise. So they baked bread without yeast. No yeast means that the bread didn't rise, so it was flat. The people quickly packed their belongings and their flat bread um, and other food. Then God led them out of Egypt to freedom. God told his people to celebrate the Passover to remember what he had done for them. Here were God's words as recorded in Exodus chapter 12. We're going to read verse 14. Always remember this day, you and your children, after you must celebrate this day as a feast to honor the Lord. As God instructed, the Israelites made a habit of celebrating the Passover with a meal that included the lamb and the flat bread with no yeast. Like the bread they'd taken on their journey out of Egypt. Jesus himself grew up celebrating the Passover every single year, and the Passover feast was the meal, was the last meal that he shared with his closest friends the night before he died. But on that particular night, Jesus did something different. He changed the Passover meal. The Apostle Paul wrote about that evening years later in the letter to the Corinthians. So we're going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 26. On the night that the Lord Jesus was handed over to the enemies, he took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it. He said, this is my body. It is given to you. Every time you eat it, do it in memory of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. 
He said, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Every time you drink it, do it in memory of me. You eat the bread and drink the cup. When you do this, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. The bread was a reminder of how Jesus would allow himself to be killed for us. And the drink was a reminder of how Jesus would allow his blood to spill so that we can live. Remember, the Passover feast was a way for God's people to remember how he had rescued them from Egypt. And the plague that had passed over their houses because they had blood, the blood of the lamb on their doorways. Now, Jesus was setting up a new celebration for people who have put their faith in him. It was a way for them to remember that he had come to be the savior of the whole world. Jesus took a traditional habit of grat gratitude, the Passover, and he turned it into another habit of grat gratitude as communion or the Lord's Supper. As we eat the bread and drink the juice, we remember that what Jesus had done for us. We remember that God has made it possible for everyone to be rescued from sin and death through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. And we make a habit of remembering what Jesus had done because it reminds us of how grateful we are for him. Communion helps us be thankful. It's one of the ways that we can remind ourselves to live with gratitude to God and to others. It's a great way for us to do this. Get in the habit of being grateful. Let's go ahead and close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for this awesome time that we get to spend together, Lord, to learn more about you. God, thank you so much for sending your son um, for us, Lord, and we can never thank you enough for that. Um, please bless everyone who's watching, Lord. Please put your hand of protection over them and those who are not watching, God, and just let the, protect them throughout this whole week and let them have a, an awesome week. Thank you for always loving us and always being there for us. In God's name we pray, amen. Thank you guys for watching another week of Bible stories on here, and I hope to see you guys at Kids Worship today. Bye!